Hello, everyone. Welcome. Ah, hey, hey, guys, mage. Um, so today is going to be the first of our uh, itch.io grab bag days. Hey, stand. Good to see ya. Um, so uh, just a quick rundown of what these are going to look like. Um, so we're going to be playing. Hey, hey, hello, Lena Lefay. We will be playing. Um, kind of a, a mix of games. So it'll be two to three games we'll be devoting um, around an hour to each, either half an hour to an hour, depending on uh, how long the game is. I know some of these we might be able to kind of complete in one sitting. So we will um, see how that looks like. I'll be posting um, store links to everything on Twitter at the um, at the end of the stream. And then they're also going to be in the Discord link. Um, let me just drop the... Uh, the server invite link here, just a sec for uh, those who are interested in joining. That's going to be a place to find like scheduled ahead of time, um, as well as art and stuff, kind of just all consolidated in one place if you don't want to keep checking Twitter for that sort of thing. So there is that. Um, I will be listing any content warnings that uh, the creators for these games have decided to list ahead of time before we play. Um, so that way, you know, if there's something that you need to sit out for, um, then you can do that. There is only uh, one game that has that today, and that will be the first one we're playing, um, which kind of deals with um, like death in a pretty honest capacity. It's called A Mortician's Tale, and you're an employee at a funeral home. So uh, yeah, that's just something to know about. The other two games should not require any sort of content warnings in that capacity. Um, so with that out of the way, let's just kind of get right into it. So let me get this pulled up and we'll get swapped over to the gameplay screen. One of these days, I will remember my hotkeys. It's going to happen. Okay. Uh, let me know how game audio is, if it could use any adjustment. Um, I think it should be okay at that level, but we will see. So, yeah, this is one that I've had my eye on for a long time and I just never got around to playing it. It's been sitting in my bundles for a while, so I'm excited to get started with this one. September 14th, 10.15 a.m. Okay. Hey, Elmreed, welcome. Hello. Good to see ya. A game I've actually played before you for once? Yeah, well, you know how I am with bundle games, so. Oh, welcome, Frere. Okay. Oh, uh, wow. Okay, that is an email inbox. Um, hello, and welcome to our new funeral director. Uh, I don't know if this is chronological or not. Let's see. Okay. Tips for good etiquette at a funeral from Funerals Monthly. Thanks for subscribing. Each month we bring you a new newsletter featuring a topic pertaining to the death industry. This month is all about good etiquette for attending a funeral. I really can't believe we have to write this one out, but since we said we'll answer your most popular questions, here we are, because this is definitely one of the most popular questions. Funerals are a hard time and we understand that, but here are some quick and easy rules to remember for being a respectful at a funeral. Generally, following the guidelines of don't be a jerk should work. Number one. Don't be on your cell phone. We understand you're busy, but this but this is a time and place to disengage. If you have to be on your cell phone, don't do so inside the funeral home. Number two, don't be loud and obnoxious. You can share happy stories, but other people are also grieving and working through their own healing process. Being quiet gives other people space they might need. Number three, don't get drunk. Everyone can deal with their feelings in their own ways. Just remember to be respectful with the grieving family and friends. Number four, happily reminisce. Sometimes remembering happy moments and positive experiences with the, deceased, with the deceased can be a productive part of the healing process. Number five, give condolences. It's not easy knowing what to say to someone, but even a simple, I'm thinking of you can go a long way. Number six, dress appropriately. What this looks like will change based on the customs of the deceased and their culture, but always dress in a way that shows respect to the deceased and their grieving family. Number eight, give a gift or sign the registration book. This can be flowers or a nice card, but it's the thought that counts here. Sometimes this can even be just cooking dinner for the grieving family. Anything that shows you care and want to help them through the healing process is what matters here. 
be kind and be helpful. From Amy Rose, today's tasks. Hello, Charlie. Hope you settled in okay so far. Matthew should have dropped off your first body for you to work on. He said you were really friendly and he's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. You'll get used to his sense of humor. Your first body is Mrs. Garcia, an elderly woman who died suddenly of a heart attack. The family has asked for a closed casket funeral, so no embalming or body preparation is necessary. The family seems a little bit more united than previous families we dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a bit easier, if that's possible. That being said, although you will not be embalming Mrs. Garcia, I do think it's important to take time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body, of course, but I like to encourage my funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased and their loved ones. You'll find Mrs. Garcia in the prep room. Talk soon. Amy Rose, founder and director, Rose and Daughters Funeral Home. Okay, and it looks like this is from the client herself. There's a lot of text and I'm gonna do my best to read out all the pertinent stuff, but like, this is a lot to get through. <laughs> okay. Let's see, instructions. Hello, Charlie, while you're new here, well, you're new here, so it's probably best I explain where everything is. In your office preparation room, you'll find your cremation station, cremulator station, embalming station, and obviously since you're reading this email, your desk and computer area. I know you have experience working with these stations, but please let me know if you have any questions. Best, Amy Rose. Okay, so let's get started and do the auto response. Okay. Let's uh, prepare our body. This is the prep room where you will prepare bodies for burials and viewings. Because the family has requested a closed casket ceremony with no embalming, you are just going to clean the body. Click the sponge and drag it over the body to clean it. Oh, that's a sound effect. That's it, you're done. Mrs. Garcia will be sent to Mike, who will take care of dressing and putting her in the casket. It's time to go to Mrs. Garcia's funeral. You're responsible for taking care of the deceased's body, but it is also important to pay your respects to their loved ones. Follow the arrow to head to the funeral parlor. Okay. We usually don't small talk a lot at these things. At least that's what I was always taught. I hate wearing pantyhose. My legs are so itchy, but it's always so cold in these funeral homes. I think I might actually miss those sweaters she used to knit for me now. She would have hated these paintings. She was so particular. Yeah, at least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. That's, yeah, I guess. Mommy, I'm hungry. When can we go? Yeah, I heard the family specifically said no embalming. I thought it was mandatory, like required by law, but I guess not. Embalming weirds me out. Do those chemicals leach into the ground? Seems strange to be using a chemical that is known to cause cancer and putting it into the ground like that. Or into the sewer. That's what they must do with the leftover formaldehyde, right? Just pour it down the drain? At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. <laughs> Stop it. Don't make me laugh right now. Yeah... I don't know if anyone in the chat has read any of um, Caitlin Doughty's memoirs, because I know this is like partially based on them. 
Um, I've only read Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, but that one's a really, really good look at like the death industry and like embalming as a profession. Uh, October 11th, 10.09 a.m. I could be remembering wrong, but I'm pretty sure like on the store page, it says that it, it drew inspiration from like the Ask a Mortician stuff that she does. Um, next job. Hi, Charlie. Here are the instructions for your next body. You did a remarkable job on the first one. The family was very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Pleasing a grieving family isn't exactly the most comfortable of jobs. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval, an elderly man, died of old age. Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter, Lizzie Duval, if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as can be expected. As always, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Best, Amy Rose. P.S. Charlie, dear, please remember to wear proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my maternal instincts are hard to ignore. I promise I won't mother you too much. Well, just a little. Ask Matthew. He knows. Um... Okay, that was the Garcia's. So that was the funeral that we just did. I'll get right on it. Okay, we've already got our embalming gear on. Traditional burials typically require embalming, which preserves the body and prevents it from decomposing as quickly. Unless the family requests otherwise, all traditional burials will use embalming. Let's start by cleaning the body. Okay, so same deal as last time. Click on the razor and drag it over the body to shave it. Okay. In order to break rigor mortis, you'll have to massage the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. The eyeballs deflate once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag an eye cap into each eye socket to give it shape. We are not going to think too hard about the spikes on these. To keep the eyes shut, you'll need to glue them. Click and drag the glue onto each eye to shut it. Oh, click and drag. Okay. The polar opposite of mortuary assistant. Yeah, yeah, this one sure ain't a horror game. This one I can play. Uh, the mouth sags and hollows once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag a cotton ball into the mouth to give it shape. To keep the mouth from opening, you'll need to suture it shut. Click and drag the needle and thread over the jaw to close it. Click and drag the lotion over the body to moisturize it. This prevents the skin from drying out. Embalming involves removing blood and replacing it with preserving chemicals. Click and, gra click and drag the scalpel over the neck to make an incision. You're going to need a tube for draining the blood. Click on the tube and drag it into the neck incision. Click on the cannula and drag it onto the carotid artery. This is how you'll get the preserving chemicals into the bloodstream. Uh, is it? Okay, yep. Now you'll need to connect the embalming machine to the cannula. Grab some additional tubing and drag it to the that. Click the button on the embalming machine to turn it on. 
in order to evenly distribute the chemicals you'll have to massage them through the body click and drag over the body to massage it i really like how respectful this feels yeah it's not like i mean it feels an accurate depiction but it's not sensationalized anyway it's and like you said it's very respectful i think I think this is not something that a lot of us like have a huge knowledge base on or would be dealing with in our daily lives so it's it is neat to get that perspective great now let's soak the incision click and drag the needle and thread over the incision to close it Almost done. You'll need to drain the organs of any remaining fluid. Click on the trocar and then click and hold on the abdomen until all the fluid has been drained. And you're done. Mike will take care of Mr. Duval's makeup, as well as dressing and putting him in the casket. It's time to attend the funeral. Okay, so this one's open casket. Came out of nowhere. I mean, it always sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah, one minute you're laughing, having fun, and then the next, poof, that person is gone. Just like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about for too long, like staring at the sun. I start to feel all fuzzy when I think about it. Mm -hmm. It's so weird how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah, yeah. so strange not seeing most people wearing white. White? Yeah, I think it's different for different family members. I can't remember. I haven't gone to many traditional funerals. So mostly white, but like definitely not red, no matter what. He always wanted to take his grandkids to the park, play catch. He loved playing catch. He threw a mean curveball, that's for sure. Coming to himself. December second, ten twenty two AM. Hello, Charlie. Today's funeral is for a woman who died from breast cancer. Nothing fancy, just a standard cremation. Please don't hesitate to ask me if you have any questions. Best, Amy Rose. Hi, Amy. Thank you for the wonderful evening you and your staff put together for my father's funeral. He wasn't always an easy man to get along with, but I'm glad to have seen him off in such a kind way. Thank you, Lizzie. Passing on this lovely thank you note. If you've been a long time subscriber to our emails or follow us on social media, you've no doubt heard about the misgendering that transgender people are at times subjected to during their funerals. There have been notable situations where trans women have had their wishes overruled by their families and have had their hair cut, are buried under the wrong names and subjected to the wrong pronouns in their obituary announcements. We care a lot about this because we believe in treating every person with the same level of compassion, respect, and care. And this absolutely extends to pronouns and respecting the deceased's wishes as per their lived experiences. 
the c d c funeral directors handbook on death registration and fetal death reporting offers the fraught directive enter male or female based on observation do not abbreviate or use other symbols if sex cannot be determined after verification with medical records inspection of the body or other sources enter unknown do not leave this item blank Leaving it up to observation obviously enters into a world of issues since bodies can be so different and because of ingrained bias, people can draw incorrect assumptions based on their own inaccurate observations. California has passed what is known as the Respect After Death Act, which states that the death certificate must reflect the deceased's gender identity as they lived it. So, a step in the right direction. People who are trans deserve the same respect in death that people who are cisgender receive. Misgendering and death takes away this respect. It can also inflict hurt and trauma on spouses and friends that survive the deceased. So, what can we do as funeral directors? Listen to the people who come into your office. In America especially, some marriages may not be recognized as legal depending on the laws around same-sex marriage, but this doesn't mean you're not dealing with two people who have loved each other in the same way as another couple. Listen, learn, and always be respectful. While you have to work with the next of kin, your duty is also to ensure the deceased receives the utmost respect in their burial. It is a funeral to honor the if a funeral is to honor the deceased, then do that. Honor them. Yeah, that is wonderful. It's um it's very nice to see a game kind of tackle that. Before we cremate Mrs. Hall, we'll need to prepare her body. Mrs. Hall's family brought jewelry and clothing for her to wear. It's important to remove these before the cremation process so as not to damage them. Let's start by removing Mrs. Hall's necklace. Aw, oh, thanks, Dan. Click and drag the necklace and place it on the purple tray. We'll place the necklace in the urn with Mrs. Hall's remains later. We need, to be we need to be able to identify Mrs. Hall's remains after she's been cremated. Click and drag the round identification tag and put it in the coffin. Great, Mrs. Hall is all set to be cremated now. This is the cremulator. Contrary to popular belief, cremation doesn't turn bodies into ash so much as bone fragments. Using the cremulator will break the bone fragments down into ash-like remains. Let's start by placing the urn in the cremulator. Click on the urn and drag it under the nozzle. Click and drag the bone fragments and drop them into the top of the cremulator. Now that all the bones have been processed, click and drag the urn back to the counter. Make sure to put Mrs. Hall's necklace back into the urn. Click on the necklace and drag it to the urn. Don't forget the tag. Click on the round identification tag and drag it to the urn. Last step. Click on the urn's lid and drag it on top. The using of graphics that's easy to stomach is a very smart call. Yes, I agree. 100% because like again not something most of us have experience with in our day to day but I think they've managed to do it in a way that translates it well but like again not sensationalizing all done Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some uh, some flowers She would have hated this music. She never wanted her funeral to be sad. She would have wanted us smiling. She said so. Yeah, I, I didn't know that they would put in the jewelry with the remains after a cremation.
she fought really hard. She was proud of herself. She never gave up, not once. Glad she was cremated and not like, not in like an open casket or something. Seeing her like that, I don't know if I could have. At least we all got to say goodbye. She would have liked that. This is nice in a weird way. She'd like that we're all here talking. She always tried to keep the family together. The food is delicious. I know that's weird, but these crab cakes are perfect. February 14th, 10.14 a.m. Hi, all. It is with a very heavy heart that I write to let you all know that Rose and Daughters will no longer be in business. I had no idea how to start this email, and resources I googled told me that would be the best and easiest way to break the ice. Be direct but remorseful, Google said. The truth is, I don't really know what to say. Since my father passed away, I've done my best to make Rose and Daughters warm and friendly to anyone who chose to use our services. It was my memorial to him, the original Rose, in a lot of ways. And you've all become like family, including you, Charlie, our most recent addition. But it's been getting harder to make ends meet. Rent is going up in the neighborhood and I'm finding less and less I have. And I'm finding less and less like I have the energy for this business. There's a lot of competition from other funeral homes, larger corporations than we are that can take on more business and offer more impressive services. You know the way it goes. So we've been bought, or I sold. Either way, soon, Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated, a company that owns many funeral homes in the city and across the country, will repra replace Rows and Daughters starting from the beginning of next month. Same building, same name. They're keeping the name Rose and Daughters Funeral Home for tax purposes, though honestly, I'm trying hard not to just see it as a move on their part to keep up the image that it's a family-run business. I don't know how I feel about that, but I also don't know if there's anything I can do at this point either. I've signed the papers. At least my father's legacy is still intact somewhat. They have a good reputation and have agreed to keep you all on. That was one of my stipulations. I would sell as long as you all weren't without a job. Sorry I didn't tell you in a more personal way. I would have loved to have a company lunch, but I admittedly, I didn't have the heart to tell you in person. This was easier for me. Please understand. Hi, Charlie. Please see the note below about the pacemaker. They can be tricky. Hi, Amy. You asked if there were any special instructions we wanted to pass along. Just please cremate my father. He has a pacemaker, too. The doctor told me that would need to be removed. Thanks, Mariana. I mean, me too, though. I am really sad about that. Mr. Reyes came directly from the hospital, so we don't have to worry about removing any valuables from him, as the family did not provide any for us to include. However, Mr. Reyes has a pacemaker that we'll need to remove before cremation. Because pacemakers are batteries, they will explode inside the hot heat of the cremation machine, and we definitely don't want that. Let's start by removing Mr. Reyes' pacemaker. Click and drag the scalpel over the heart to make an incision. You can see the pacemaker. Click on the forceps to drag the pacemaker out of the heart. Put the forceps away. Place the round identification tag in the coffin. Mr. Reyes is all set to be cremated now. Using the cremulator will break the bone fragments down into ash-like remains. Yeah, me too, stand. Place the urn. Bones. 
I gotta say, the contrast between this one and the last cremation's got me feeling some kind of way that there's no, like, jewelry or valuables to put in the urn with him. Put the urn back on the counter. Round identification tag in the urn. Lid on top of the urn. All done. Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Did you ever end up clearing the air with your father? No, we talked a few times, but no, not really. He sounded like a difficult man. He was stubborn. That's just it. Stubborn. What do you want to do after this? It's pretty nice out. Let's change and go find a patio somewhere. Sounds good. I could really use a beer right now. Hey, did I ever tell you the time we tailgated? I wonder if he ever liked me. He was nice to me, but I don't know. He never seemed like he really cared if I was there or not. I always told him to quit smoking, but of course he never listened to me, so that figures. I think something that I'm dreading is if, like, we come out for a funeral and there's no one here. February 28th, 10.35 a.m. I just wanted to thank you for the service the other month and apologize if I was abrupt. It was kind of a shock for me and I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. He wasn't supposed to die yet. It hasn't been easy. Oh, this is gonna be a fucking hell of an email to click on. Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to confront the situation. Yet anyways, they're never easy. Rosen Daughters has been asked to prepare the body of a young man who took his own life. He had a will prepared and asked for cremation, but the family has demanded a traditional burial instead. Unfortunately, he didn't make anyone his power of attorney or didn't have any witness sign his living will or his advance directive regarding these wishes, so his family is legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate, but we have to do as his family wishes. Matthew has graciously offered to take this on if you are uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, we have a second body you can prepare for a funeral we're hosting later in the afternoon. Charlie, is this suicide som something you're comfortable dealing with? Let me know. I'm here if you need me. Good day, Miss Rose. Disregard our son's will as it concerns matters of his burial. He was clearly not thinking right and didn't know what he really wanted. Proceed with an open casket funeral. Man, fuck you. Um. Chow. Which do you think we should go with? Yeah, I'm fucking seething right now, too. Like... Oy. This is difficult, because, like... I'll say that yes sucks. I mean, it's gonna happen... Either way is the thing. Regardless of what body we choose to prepare, this person's wishes were not. 
fuck, man. Um, I will take well done, but it sucks. Let's let's be the ones to do it. Yeah, that's how I feel. It's because he he wouldn't have wanted the open casket, but on the other hand, someone else will still have to do it anyway. So, you know, might as well be us. The deceased's family has asked for an open casket funeral. Let's start by cleaning the body. Shaved body. Break rigor mortis by massaging the body. Eye caps into each socket. Glue the eyes shut. Cotton balls in the mouth. Sew the jaw closed. Moisturize. Make an incision on the neck. Tubing for drainage. Attach the cannula to the tubing. And massage the body for the embalming. Kind of dreading what the visitors are gonna see on this one. Yeah, I really feel that. Incision closed. Use the truck car to drain the organs. All done. Mike will take care of Mr. Scott's makeup as well as dressing and putting him in his casket. So I know we have the option to literally just like walk up to the casket and then leave. We're not going to do that though. I wish we were closer. I still can't believe this is real. My baby brother, I should have played more games with him when he asked, I... I still can't believe he did it, but I feel like I should have known, you know? Been able to do something to stop it. There was no way to know, you can't blame yourself. He wouldn't have wanted that. I know, I know, it's just, it hurts. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I heard it wasn't going to be open casket. I'm surprised it's public, usually funerals for these. These circumstances are more private. was not as bad as it could have been, I think. March 3rd, 10.45 a.m. We 
we are pleased to bring on Rose and Daughters as part of Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated. They will be another institution amongst hundreds of other properties owned across the country. But of course, as part of the adjustment process to the Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated culture, there will be a number of changes that will come to Rose and Daughters. We will send out the memo regarding the specifics and details of these changes, and we expect them to be followed impeccably. Glad to be leading the way for Rose and Daughters from now on. Can I just say first off that this is bullcrap? Knowing how these corporations run, I wouldn't be surprised if they're monitoring our emails now. No, okay, I don't really believe that. I'm just upset. I get that Amy didn't have much of a choice. You can only fight against a huge corporation taking all your business for so long. This isn't six feet under. And they just swooped in, and now we have to deal with their BS practices. They're colder than the corpse I picked up from the morgue this morning. Who charges this month for funerals? It feels dirty and exploitive. Let's grab a drink after work. I need to blow off some steam and emails aren't really the most appropriate place to do this. Too late for me, I guess. P.S. If you are reading this Hillside Overlord, good. Game gives the same vibes as Unpacked. I've actually not played Unpacked before. Stories told with things outside of the story itself. Love it. Yes, very, very good. Charlotte. Man, my name's Charlie. Fuck off, dude. Um, below are the details for our next client. Ensure you follow the requested specifications exactly. After you are done, I will review your work in order to properly evaluate you at the end of the month. You know, I kind of hate Chad, like, a lot. Thank you, Mr. Grant, for agreeing to take care of Jocelyn's cremation. The bike accident was, well, it was more than I was expecting. I know she wanted to be cremated, and to be honest, I don't think I could bear seeing her like that after what happened. I'll get right to it, Chad. Prepare Miss Ionesco's body for cremation. Remove her watch and place it on the tray. Round ID tag in the coffin. Missy and Esco's all set to be cremated now. Using the cremulator, we're going to break down the bone fragments. Urn. Bones. back on the counter. Matthew will take Miss Ionesco's urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Should we do a vigil at the spot? Careless drivers, I swear to God. She was always so careful. Wore her helmet, signaled, used the bike lanes. Asshole drivers, they need to pay attention. Have you heard what's happening to the driver? No, I haven't wanted to ask Leah. This has been hard enough on them without asking about the legal ramifications of all this. Yeah, after all this, let's see what we can do to help them. Shouldn't deal with the death of their partner all by themselves. I'm glad I'm here, but wow, I just need a glass of wine and to binge watch something right now. I have to go through all of her things. How am I supposed to decide what to keep? If you need help, I can help. No, thanks, I mean, but no, I don't know. It's so intimate. Feels like I should do it myself. She would kill me if others saw the things we have. <laughs> yeah, she was kind of a closed book, except to you. Yeah, yeah, she was special. So glad it was a cremation. I would have lost it seeing her body.
March 24th, 1030 AM. Oh God, rules and code of conduct. As stated in a previous email, here are the new rules and code of conduct I expect you to follow from now on while on any premises belonging to Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated. First and foremost, there is a required uniform and strict dress code from now on. Second, most importantly to this, is that no tattoos are to be visible. If you have visible tattoos, ensure they are properly covered and hidden. Man, fuck off. When speaking with customers and clients, consider the opportunity to upsell, i.e. always encourage the deceased's lover, loved ones to purchase the higher quality package. We find that encouraging loved ones to think of the comfort and style of the deceased as an experience with no price limit on it. Additionally, food is no longer to be allowed to be brought in. Instead, encourage the deceased's loved ones to purchase our premium sandwich and appetizer food package. Our partner catering concepts provides high quality food that will be delivered weekly from their factory and can easily be defrosted the morning of the funeral. I expect all of the above changes to be instituted effective immediately to ensure a smooth transition into the high quality services Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated is known for. The death industry would be way too much to work in because of this shit. 100% agreed. I would just fucking walk. Like, fuck off, Chad. Charlie, I need a drink. Beer after work? P.S. Also, I really want mozzarella sticks. I can be both hungry and angry, and no, I will not say hangry, ever. Yeah, agreed, Stand. Latest contract acquisition in the city. I am proud to announce that Hillside Heritage Enterprises received a contract with the city to dispose of any unclaimed bodies. This is an important revenue stream for us, as I'm sure I don't need to explain to you. Although Hillside Heritage Enterprises is being paid a decent wage from the city for these services, cremation is preferred here as the more cost efficient of the two options. The first unclaimed body we will be handling belongs to a middle-aged man, possibly homeless, whose body has yet to be claimed. No special preparations are needed for this cadaver aside from cremation. This will suck. Yeah. Yeah. Before we cremate this gentleman, we'll need to prepare his body. He doesn't seem to have any valuables on him that would be damaged during cremation, so let's just worry about putting the identification tag into the coffin with him. Gentleman is all set to be cremated now. drill for cremation stuff. Matthew will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Oh, that's okay. Is it just going to be me? April 9th, 1019. I hate this. Yeah, yeah, right there with you, bud. God. I swear to God, if Chad is on our ass about shit again, Chad.
Jesus fucking Christ. We are thrilled to announce that Hillside Heritage Enterprises Incorporated subsidiary Rose and Daughters just signed a contract with the Morning Valley Hospital, allowing us access to all of the cadavers that come through their pediatric and maternity wards. I'm not reading the rest of this shit. not able to convince the Dimka family to take a standard funeral. I had to contact them myself in order to not lose the sale. Please read the enclosed emails for a lesson on how to properly upsell potential customers. I don't want to see that we've lost any customers because of your refusal to upsell. That is part of the job. And I hope things turn around a little bit, because, like, this is grim. The deceased's family has asked for an open casket funeral. Let's start by cleaning the body. Like, I do have the feeling that it's, it is going to be reflective of the reality of the situation, but God's going to suck to see. I hate the mere concept of upselling anything in this industry. Yeah, it's real fucking skeevy. Agreed. Do not want to ever become the kind of person that would be okay with that shit. Like, good God. Mike will take care of Mrs. Dimka's makeup as well as dressing and putting her in the casket. I hope Chad is out here so I can beat his ass. I'm starving. Why do these things always make me so hungry? You're always hungry. It's so cold in here. I think they have the air conditioning on too high. Yeah, let's go for a walk later. It's really nice out. Would be good to stretch my legs. This feels so impersonal. She would have hated this. Yeah, but I don't know. They must have had their reasons. Oh, hey, what do you think of that trailer I sent you? Oh, yeah, I've heard that show so good. I saw the video of the one kid actor doing karaoke. Do you think we did the right thing? I feel bad not doing what mom asked for. 
I know, honey, but what that Chad guy said seems right. We don't want to dishonor her memory by letting her rot. Yeah, I just want Lom to know I loved her. Wish I hadn't yelled at her before. It's okay. She knew you loved her. Fights happen. Please don't be hard on yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna miss her. Me too. I know it is likely not going to happen, but I just want some kind of comeuppance for Chad at the end of this game, because, like... God, I hate that dude. August 30th, 9 a.m. Oh, that's... Okay. That's not our usual workspace. Oh, bless. Charlie, dear, I am so proud of you. I knew there was something special in you when I hired you for Rose and Daughters. If there's anything I can do, please do not hesitate to ask. I am always happy to help. Best wishes, Amy Rose. P.S. I sorely miss you and Matthew's terrible sense of humor. Charlie, I'm so happy for you. I know it's been a rough year. Seriously, I think our wine intake saw a bazillion percent increase, but you've stuck through it all like a champ. You deserve this. Finally being your own boss is a great move for you. No more having to explain anything you don't want to. I'm trying to not be too cheesy right now. Can't wait to be home next week for our visit and to check out your new space. Always, Jen. P.S. Have you heard about these green burial pods? When I find the link in, one, in my one million open tabs, I'll shoot it over to you. You'll never believe what new job I'm working now. Open this email to find out. Hey, Charlie. When I first became a hearse driver, I was told that my most important job wasn't steering, it was sympathizing. I respectfully disagree. And thankfully, I concentrated on my driving skills since I'm now working as a, wait for it, bus driver. A school bus driver, Charlie. Can you believe that? Pretty sure if I said the most important part of my job now wasn't steering, I'd be fired immediately. I didn't know how else to tell you. For some reason, I was worried you'd think less of me, but I don't know why you've never been the judgmental kind. And beside, corpses are way easier to deal with with children. Screaming children, might I add. I actually love it. The kids can be pretty cute. But don't tell Amy that I told you that. She was always harping on me for not having any kids and for being all cynical about them. Congrats on your new business, Charlie. I'm proud of you. I'll swing by your new place one day and show you my new wheels. Maybe we can grab a bite to eat. Be seeing ya. Matthew J. Dear Charlie, today's the day already, isn't it? I can't believe how quickly this has come up. Thank you for your understanding and for your work. You've made today easier already. See you at 1 p.m. Best, Eileen Hansen. Oh, well, hold up. There was another tab that I wanted to check out. Okay, so I guess we have our own parlor now. That's... I am very glad that it ended on that note. This hurts. I thought it'd be easier, but it's not. It hurts so much. But thank you for helping me give her the funeral she's always wanted. Anyway, I think I'm ready. I think we're ready to get started now. I played that. That was... That was a very good experience. Great way to end the game. Yes, 100% agreed. I think that was 
exactly the direction that it needed to go in at the end there because goddamn Okay. Um, let's swap back to here for just a second. Um, okay, that was a mortician's tale. Um, yeah, that was a hell of an experience. Um, next one is definitely not going to be that heavy because it's just a more uh, traditional roguelike, as far as I can tell. Um, so we are going to swap over to that. Give me just one moment. Bam, cool. The aspect ratio on it is like just barely not 4-3. So we've got a little background to help us out today, but um, let me know if this one's a little too loud, but we will see. Uh, anyway, this is our second game, Roguelite, a uh, game by Daniel Linson, audio by Jonathan Tree. Okay. I don't know if we're going to spend a full hour with this one, just because I don't know how much there is to do with it, but I guess we're going to find out. I would like more arrows, please. Got some towerfall vibes almost. That's another one that I have not played, and I should at some point for sure. I do like the like original Game Boy color palette it's got going on. Yeah. Maddie Thorson can do no wrong. True. You right. Okay, how do I get out of here? That ain't it. I don't think we can make that jump. We cannot. That's fine. I would like more arrows. Got one. Oops. Let's try not to get killed by spikes. Um. Okay, so our arrows only stay lit for a little bit, which is kind of annoying, but we're gonna make two, I guess. good at video games, I promise. Game, where do you want me to go? Other than down. Oh god. Okay. Well, we made it to level two. That was a bit of a drop. This 
sound design is pretty neat. Well, that's not. That's fine. That's first death. We made it to level two. I'm okay with that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, there's a double jump. Okay. That's going to be a while, though. Um, let's see. Oh, we can break lanterns. Interesting. Um, we only have 18, but that's fine. Let's do plus one health. And... Okay, all of our cheap stuff is up here. Let's see. And plus one arrows. That seems fine. Yes. Okay. Let's go this way first. Got a little dog picture. I love that. do that, but that's good to know. Oh well. Oh, that's arrows. That's that's me getting things. Okay. Nope. None of that. None of that either. Level two. Desperate need of more arrows. What else is new? Okay. Oh, beautiful. Oh, okay. Level three. None of that. I would like those arrows over there, but I do not know how I'm going to get them. Oh, God. Nope. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. We're good. Um, let's do I mean, we've got 20 and we're going to lose any unused stuff. So let's just do that. Thank you, Stan.
don't mind me just being incredibly wasteful with my arrows. But still, because we've got more. Level two. Level two. deal a lot more damage than I thought they would. Which, fair, but like, I don't like it. Okay. Um, I'll do the minus one damage. Again, again, again. Soon we will get plus one coins for lanterns. Eventually. Nice little coffee break game, but it's still got some polish. Yeah, I agree. Like the runs go very fast from what we've seen. Like everything's doing what it should, so level two, maybe soon. Can we level two, please? There we go. I just need two more coins. That's it. Just two. Coins, please. Just one coin, and then I can get my next upgrade. Oh god. There we go. Okay. It's a good thing I jumped over that. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Where is the path to level three? This way, probably. Those is spikes. Those hurt me. Okay. Um. Yay, we got that. Okay. Split arrow. More arrow brightness. Jump height. Okay. Let's shoot. I'm gonna shoot to get to like level. Let's shoot for level four. Four or five. We can probably do that. We're only like 15 minutes in. Give coin. Very rude.
Okay. Yes, increased coins will be very helpful. just wasting literally every arrow I have trying to get that lantern. And then not being able to get back to the coins from it. Cool. Very good. Oh, wonderful. Hearts, please. And arrows. That's fine. Um, let's see what we can get. Jump height. Um, let's do coins from enemies. Honestly, I think the more coin upgrades we can get, the better right now. arrows. I think it's like 18 for our next upgrade. Maybe. That sounds right. And they're on the spikes. Cool. I want some coins. Oh, that was nice. Powish. Level three. Level three. We're fine. Who needs arrows? Or light? Especially when there's an enemy walking around there. Oh. Be gone. those dudes in a while. Come here. We're going to ignore that. Yeah, I'm a pro at this game. Clearly. No arrows wasted. First try. We did it. Okay. Um, let's see. 
I would like to get to level four. Can you tell me how to get there, game? Do it? We did it! Level 4, y'all! Okay. Yeah, we professionals. We, we good. Killed him with the ricochet from the lantern. Okay. Well, let's see. Oh, do we do it? Level five? Level five, yeah. professional of gamers today. Only the most professional. Okay. Um, let's get the jump height. And Air brightness. We do love an upgrade tree. I love to purchase nodes on things. One of my favorite video game activities. Okay, cool. Yeah, we will keep this going for another five minutes and then we'll switch to our final game for the day. So this will be our last run, I think. please? Perhaps? Nope. That's not arrows. That is also not arrows. And I made it to level two. That's arrows. That's the stuff I need. I have no arrows. And I must scream. Oh, no, I do have arrows now. Still might scream, though. It's up for debate.
Ow. The classic story. Yep. I guarantee it's less racist than the Harlan Ellison one. Um, several people throughout time lose their arrows. I do like the little upgrade screen jingle. It's very fun. Okay, um, let's get swapped back over to here for a little bit. So that was Roguelite. That is our second game of the day. Um, this is very fun. Cute little game. Um, our last one for the day is another narrative focused one. Uh, Liev Oma, I think is how that's pronounced. Um, I could be butchering that, but you know what? We learning, we learning. So let's let's get into that one. Okay, here we go. Final game of the day. We did it, y'all. Just move this a little bit. And let's begin. I am playing with mouse and keyboard, so, okay. Interact, shift to run. Okay. It's a very cute art style. All right, there's nobody else it seems, that's good. Perhaps we're the first of the season to come mushrooming here? Aha! I know I forced you a bit to come, and I'm sorry. But you looked like you could really have a bit of fresh air. Sure. Whatever. Let's get going. It's the season for penny buns, so you'll have to look for those. Reminds me like a more polished short hike. Another game that I still need to play. If you don't recognize a mushroom you find, just show me and we'll have a look together. Music is very nice too. Thanks for coming with me, by the way. Grandma's not as flexible anymore. It's pretty tough for me to pick up these mushrooms. Sure. This game better not hurt me. Forest ambience, it's very nice. Ooh, mushroom. Wow, you already found one. You're really taking this seriously, huh? I'm not surprised. You always like to make a challenge out of things. Don't worry, though. If you don't find enough penny buns, Grandma's got some ideas for what to eat this evening. Let's see now. What do we have here? Well, it seems you're good with this one. Great job. Hey, but don't forget, if you're not sure if you have the right species, always check with someone before you eat them. Mushrooms can be really dangerous. Grandma doesn't want you to get ill. All right, let's look for some more. Remember when we came here when you were younger to build huts and everything? That was a long time ago. I guess that's what you do in that blocky computer game nowadays with your friends, right? No, I don't anymore. Ah, what's this then? 
Ah, uh, this one's a bit too spoiled. I don't think we can eat it. Don't worry, we'll find plenty more that'll be tastier. All right, let's look for some more of them. This is uh, Liev Oma, our third and final game for the day. Such a nice morning, isn't it? It is very gorgeous. A bit early, I'd say. Haha, <laughs> silly. Oh, there's a mushroom. Bye, I guess. Ah, what's this then? Oh, this one's a bit too spoiled. I don't think we can eat it. Don't worry, we'll find plenty more that'll be tastier. Let's look for some more of them. So how's your new room, by the way? I don't really care. What do you mean you don't care? How come you don't care about your new room? I mean, it's fine. I don't want to talk about it, okay? All right, then. <laughs> Look here, you grumpy shite. Yeah. Not all of us can go on a cool walk with Grandma in gorgeous fall weather while relaxing piano music is playing. Let's see what you have here. Ah, that's also a penny bun. We can just take this part off it. The rest can be eaten without a problem. Good job, sweetie. All right, let's look for some more of them. Ah, yes, teens, TM. Yeah. He's just grumpy. He got kicked from the Minecraft server. It's fine. Oh, there's one over there. You okay, sweetie? Done a cool foraging area. There's some around here, too, and I've just never taken the time to get into it too much. My sister's done some mushrooming before, though. Ah, that's also a penny bun. You were worried about these rotten parts, right? It's okay. Look, we can just remove this part. And voila, another one for us to eat. Go us. All right, let's look for some more of them. an eye out for mushrooms. Not seeing any more around here. That's okay. We're near the stream already, I see. I wonder if we'll get to see the blue heron we always see around here. Also, a huge vibes from the game Proteus. Yes, I love that game. That one I actually have played. 
That's a very, very relaxing walking sim. I have played Proteus. <laughs> Mentioned the game to so many people. God, I'm trying to think when I got that. It must have been... Oh man, I feel old. I feel like that was 2013. Hmm. Weird, usually we see the blue heron around here, right? Maybe it left for the winter. You're right, maybe it went on vacation. Grandma, you good? Okay. This game's gonna get sad, ain't it? Don't go too far, okay? Yeah, that's my worry. I feel like this game's gonna hurt me. Seems people already got their mushrooms here. I can't see any in the vicinity. We're probably too late already, Grandma. Don't give up just yet, sweetie. Grandma sure will still find a whole lot. So, tell me what's going on. It's nothing. Sweetie, listen. You know, Grandma knows you since the very moment you were born. I can tell when my sweetie's struggling with something. It's just, it's only been a few months since we moved and I'm already losing sight of my friends. I just miss them a lot. We still chat regularly, but it's really not the same. Don't you play that blocky building game with them anymore as you used to do? Well, it's not as fun now I'm not around and stuff. There are new in-jokes I don't get because I missed something that happened offline, things like that. How about your new school, though? Haven't you made any friends there? I had to miss the first month of school because of, because of us moving house, so I don't feel as though I'm really part of my class. I kind of feel like I don't belong there, I guess. Have you told mom and dad about all this? I don't really want to talk about them, if that's okay. Sweetie, of course that's okay. You know I worry about you, and since we don't see each other so often, I worry even more. If you tell me what's going on, I can maybe help you. So thank you for telling me about this. another mushroom. Let's have a look. Ah, that's also a penny bun. We can just take this part off it. The rest can be eaten without a problem. Good job, sweetie. All right, let's look for some more of them.
sad piano music do be hidden. Oh, is that the heron? Hey, Grandma. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. How's it going? I'm fine. Thanks for lending me your car. I'll be home soon. Good. Did it still drive okay? Sure. It's a bit cold, though, so it took some time to start, is all. I went to the forest where we always came to pick mushrooms, you know. Ah, great. It's been a while since we did so, but with my leg, I can't really come, right? Well, tell me when you come back, okay? Sure. Bye. Bye, Grandma. Talk to you soon. Yep. Bye. Okay, bye, Grandma. <laughs> we love an old person yelling into the phone. And not at a customer service worker. How about we get a nice cup of chocolate milk when we get home, all right? Ah, what's this then? Oh, that's also a penny bun. You're very worried about these rotten parts, right? It's okay, look, we can just remove this part and voila, another one for us to eat. Go us. All right, let's look for some more of them. been a very chill game. What do we have here? Ah, this one's a bit too spoiled. I don't think we can eat it. Don't worry, we'll find plenty more that'll be tastier. Let's look for some more of them. Ten out of ten vibes for this game. Ever since the forest fire years ago, they decided to actually take care of it nowadays. You might not remember it, but this place used to look quite different. But with time and care, the forest became healthy again, and now people can hardly remember the way it looked back then. such a surly teenager. Ah, what's this then? That's also a penny bun. All right, let's go look for some more of them. like we're moving into like pine forest as opposed to the fall stuff. Still very pretty.
What's up, sweetie? Mom's room isn't done yet. When we just arrived, she said she was going to sleep in my room until hers was done. But it's been months now and the workers aren't coming any longer, so I don't think her bedroom will be done anytime soon. Because of this, I can't put all my stuff in my room, so I had to leave things with Dad in the old house. It's unfair that I can't have all my stuff in my room because they were fighting all the time. I'm missing my friends, had to miss the first day at the new school so I don't know anyone. Mom wakes me up when she goes to bed late. It's not cool that they do this to me, I think. Mom says I should be grateful for the things we have, but all I have is my friends and Dad being at the other end of the world slowly forgetting about me. Sweetie, they won't ever forget you. Don't worry, it'll all be fine when the dust, once the dust settles. In the meantime, I'm here for you. You're doing amazingly well, you know, despite what you're going through. It'll all turn out fine, you'll see. Come on, chin up, sweetie. Let's walk to take our minds off things a bit. I do love me a snow-covered pine forest. The sound design is a real nice touch in this game, too. I do like how it's more muffled in the winter scenes and you don't get a ton of the nature ambiance as you would in like the fall scene. I love the smell of the pine forest. It might be my favorite smell. It reminds me of the pine honey you have at home. Definitely the best honey in my book. This game is very good. We're nearing the lake, it seems. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I agree, stand. Oh, there's a little boat there. Remember when I told you about the day I arrived in the country for the first time? Yeah? Before I arrived, I'd never seen any snow in my life. Where I grew up, the only place you'd see any snow was in the crushed ice with some sugary syrup. So when I arrived here, seeing all the snow everywhere around me, Grandma totally couldn't resist eating as much of the icy sweetness lying about everywhere. Haha. <laughs> so what happened? Well, obviously, I had a stomach ache for days. So that was my introduction to this cold, snowy country. After I got better, however, I didn't lose my appetite for some nice ice cream once every so often. And slowly, with time, I learned to live in such a different country, made new friends, and I even met Grandpa here. I'm sure you'll be able to find your place at your new school. Well, we reached the bird watching cabin. Shall we head back? Do you think we have enough mushrooms? Let's see. It seems we've only found six, but that's okay. With this, we can make a nice risotto, or perhaps some Bordeaux-style porcini. Nice, yes, very nice. Let's head home then. Hey, Grandma. 
Hi, sweetie, are you okay? I'm fine, I'll be coming home soon. Okay, I was starting to worry. You don't have to, though, I'm doing fine. Well, I'm just not used to you driving, you know. We'll get home soon, okay? I'll make you a nice cup of hot cocoa. Awesome, I'll be right there, Grandma. That was a really cute game. I didn't know that was a WC piece. Didn't recognize it. <laughs> I, that was like perfect vibes to cap off this stuff. <sighs> okay. Special thanks to Alice Pessy. Extra special thanks to you for spending some time with something I made. It really means a lot to me. This game is a tribute to the people who give us the time and space we need as a child. I'm feeling real regular emotionally about that. Okay, that was uh, Via Voma. Hold up, where's my mouse at? Uh, one sec. Are we good? Okay, we're good. All right. Um, so that was our last game for the day. That game did have the powerful vibes. That was our last game for the day. Um, thank you all so, so much for coming by the stream. As always, um, our next itch.io grab bag day will be uh, two weeks from today. So I'm coming into um, my kind of intensive work week in the next couple days. So it's gonna be uh, chill morning streams for the upcoming week. And then once that is done, uh, we'll get back into like the more involved streams and we'll have um, definitely more soul hackers for you uh, next week, I think, once I've got more time for it, because uh, I definitely want to do more of that. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what else we do. I hope you all have a lovely afternoon. Thank you for sticking with it and um, yeah, for, for sticking around for that. So. Uh, without further ado, enjoy the rest of your afternoons.